Sup guys, Heat King here, bringing you a movie review. Uh, this time on Scream 6. So yeah, Scream 6. Oh, I just got done watching that yesterday morning, was it? Afternoon? Um, one of the things I find weird is when certain fan bases watch something... And they go out of their way to give it like a very high good score. Like, this is a 10 out of 10 movie. It's it's a masterpiece. And it's like, this isn't a masterpiece. Lord of the Rings is a masterpiece. The Godfather is a masterpiece. You know, those are 10 out of 10 movies, in my opinion. This this isn't a 10 out of 10, okay? That's not to say this movie is, is bad, bad, you know? Like, there are people who, you know, have the tastes okay and those people like the horror movies they see those as masterpieces and for us 10 out of 10s 5 out of 5 etc etc uh that doesn't mean it's uh right though <laughs> uh, and it doesn't mean that this movie is a 10 out of 10 or a 5 out of 5 that also doesn't mean it's bad no this is a it's a pretty damn good film actually it's a pretty damn good horror film and it's a pretty damn good uh sequel slash continuation of uh, this franchise so yeah Scream 6 actually was pretty surprising as a movie, like, hot damn, as the saying goes. And before I continue even further, please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, as I take you down into a quick road about my thoughts on this movie. So, Scream 6, uh, is it good? Is it bad? I just said it's, it's pretty good, okay? Like, is it as good as Scream 5, which I think did a better job than Scream 4? Of actually, of actually introducing new sets of characters and passing the torch. And that's what Scream 5 did. I mean, I think in some countries it was called New Blood. It's, it's very weird because Scream 4 was coming out and it was like, it's going to be about these new characters. It's going to focus on them. They're going to carry the torch forward. You know, they're going to be the new generation. And it's real from the marketing watching this. And I was like, yeah, you're not fooling anyone. That character is definitely the killer. And that character is definitely the killer. At least one of them. But, uh... Yeah, I pretty much guessed right on that. Like, I feel like the marketing for that movie completely ruined it. And with Scream 5, I don't remember there being a lot of marketing. Say with Scream 6, you know, it was it was sort of on a down low, but enough that it got your attention. Whereas with Scream 4, it's like they were trying really hard to push like this idea, and it and it and it failed. At least for me, it did. But with Scream 5, I went in thinking, well, let's see where they can go more wrong, right? After that uh, travesty, because I really didn't like Scream 4. And they did a much better job. You know, the jo kind of job I would expect something like Scream to do. Because if there's one thing I can say about this franchise is it's consistent. A, a lot of horror movies that are out there, from Halloween to Friday the 13th to Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream is the most consistent horror franchise, okay? Like, it... It doesn't reboot itself the way Halloween or other movies have constantly done with different continuities. It's been so many years now. It's been, what, like a good two decades, three decades, I think. And they've kept to the same continuity and the same sort of characters and that, like, without having to, like, oh, we're going to ignore that. We're going to ignore this. We're going to we're gonna start this sequel from this movie instead, etc., etc. No, they've kept it pretty consistent. And for that, it's one of the reasons why Scream at least in my opinion, is very high on the list in terms of good slasher horror films. Because here's another thing, right? These movies are slasher films, but in reality, they are mystery movies at heart, at its core, disguised as slasher films. And that's one of the fun things about screen movies. You go in there and you, you want to predict who the killer's going to be because it's a who did it mystery, which is one of the reasons why I'm not going to be spoiling this movie as well, by the way. <laughs> There's not going to be any spoilers here because... Uh, the whole point of going to a screen movie is to figure out who the killer is and figure out what the twists and turns are going to be. If I'm going to talk about spoilers, it, it defeats the entire purpose of, of the whole point of watching this movie. So I'm not going to talk about spoilers, okay? This is going to be a non-spoiler review, which is rare because usually I do like to talk about spoilers. But when it comes to films like this, no, I keep my mouth shut because I have to keep my mouth shut. Otherwise, it just ruins the entire experience. I know, it's weird, isn't it? It's like, you can spoil certain films, but not this. It's like, th there's a formula, okay? There's a certain formula to certain movies. You can break the rules for that. Uh, <laughs> starting to sound like Randy A, which was not the intention. But yeah, uh, Scream 6 takes place straight after Scream 5. I think it's been a year now. 
Uh, that's the time place it takes place in. The characters are the surviving characters that we have anyway that we were introduced to. You know, the uh, main sisters, uh, Sam and Tara and the twins, Mindy and Chad. They're like this core group of friends now together, living together uh, after the events that happened in the last film. And now they're going to university as well. So yeah, it's it's following them. It's it's very similar to what Scream 2 did after the events of Scream 1 and Sydney and Randy were sort of, you know, going to university together. Like this movie has a very sort of homage to that. In fact, it's got a very big homage to all the movies. If there's one thing I can say, when you look at other Scream films, they're sort of paying tribute to other horror films, right? You know, you've got the horror film uh, um, cliches of Scream 1, uh, sequels with Scream 2, the whole plot twist and trilogy element with Scream uh, 3, and then of course Scream 4 was sort of, sort of be like, what is it, a remake, a reboot that he was following, and then Scream's five was like where we're looking at recalls this one is a straight up homage to scream itself okay everything about this movie is a connection to previous films uh a lot of easter eggs flying at you and it's like wow this is this is great like they're acknowledging other movies they're acknowledging certain things that happened in the past with other characters and it's fun to see that it's fun to see those connections a lot of people probably hated scream free you're gonna get a lot of references to scream free in this and it's like yes that's what i want to see in terms of the characters, I think the performances were good for the most part. Like, I like the characters in this. I like the sisters. I think Sam and Tara do carry this forward. Like I said, the whole point of Scream 5 was about passing the torch from the legacy characters to the new characters. And Scream 5 did that. Unlike Scream 4, which promised that and decided to, you know, throw a twist in into that wrench. And be like, ah, I got you. And it's like, no, that wasn't... No, that's not what you promised me. Like, I don't like false marketing in my movies, okay? Like, keep it straight with me. And Scream 5 kept it straight, and it continues with that with Scream 6. And it's fun to see these characters back, and it's fun to see where these characters are going after the events that happened in the last movie. You know, Tara's still going for a typical uh, face. Sorry, Sam, I get them mixed up. No, Sam is going for a typical sort of crazy face, if you will. And Tara's starting to deal with it. You know, she's trying to have a normal life. So it's good to see those kind of elements going in and of course you got the twins there and they're getting closer with those characters now because of the ideals you know you know when you go on for something like that you're going to become closer you're going to become more than friends you're going to become family that's kind of the theme here as well it's like it's it's family the theme actually yeah <laughs> we're thinking about it yeah the big theme is family in this movie which is which is kind of a spoiler actually i won't go any more further into it like uh but keep this in mind since since scream 5 was paying homage to scream 1 in a way this movie, while it pays homage to all the movies, there is a certain element to it that does tiny bit pay homage to Scream 2. So think about that for a second if you're wondering, hmm, I wonder what the story of this is going to be. Um, in terms of other characters, of course, uh, like I said, we got new characters who I don't particularly remember. And if I do remember, I don't want to spoil it, that's why. So I don't want to go into it. They were fine, they were fine. Uh, in terms of legacy characters, we have Gale returning and we have Kirby from Scream 4. Now, if you paid very close attention to Scream 5, like I did, you'd know that Kirby survived the events of Scream 4, which was a big surprise. You know, I'm watching that and I'm like, wait a minute, does does that say what I think it says? And it's like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool Easter egg. Bring her back in the next movie. And they brought her back in the next movie. Who they didn't bring back uh, was Sydney. So Niev, Niev, how do I say her name? Uh, Miss Campbell did not return because apparently there was pay disputes, which is a shame. But at the same time, it's like, you don't need to bring her back. Her story is done. Like, obviously, if they did bring her back, I would have liked to have seen her and, uh, what's his name, uh, Mark from the third film actually being together and seeing the relationship and how they're acting like a uh, husband and wife and seeing them kick ass and take names, if that was the case. But um, I'm, I'm glad they didn't. I'm actually kind of happy. Like, I like that the focus is on the newer characters, on the younger generation. You don't need to throw Sydney in this. So this is... This, this, this proved, you know, Scream 5 in particular proved you don't need those characters, obviously. Like, they played roles, but it wasn't, like, big, huge roles. And then with this movie, it, it kind of reinforces that. Like, you don't need these characters anymore. Like, like Sydney's story's done, and she, she deserves her happy ending. So, unless they want to bring her back for the next movie, like, fair enough. But if you are going to bring her back, bring her back alongside Mark, okay? Like, so, but I'm glad they didn't do that. I'm glad that the focus is on the newer characters like promise this is you know we're going through this phase now we're going for this sort of new saga if you will and it's just nice to get newer characters dealing with this now it's there's only so many times you can throw sydney into the fire and be like 
and have an escape on scale. It's like, come on, just just stop now. In terms of other characters, of course, Kirby does a good job. I like Kirby. They do a good job of her. They make a good point of why she's in this and the, her connection to the other characters. So it's nice to see that. Gail, yeah, they have a play some roles in this. She does play a little bit of an important role in this. You know, she helps out the group. But at the same time, her role feels very pointless as well. It feels very shoved in. Like, while her moments are good, it, it feels like one of those things where it's like, she really didn't need to be in this movie. I'm happy she was... But at the same time, she doesn't really get a conclusion, if that makes sort of sense, right? Again, without spoiling it. So it's like, hmm, it's like, did she need to be in this? Okay, fair enough. Which then brings me to uh, the uh, location and setting. Um, again, you know, films like this, when you look at horror sequels, they always try to go bigger and grand. And I feel like this is the first time that, that Scream has technically gone very grand. I mean, there was Scream 3 with, with Hollywood. But again, it was very self-contained and very sort of isolated, narrow kind of locations in the house and that or a studio. With this, the setting is New York itself. Like, it's a big playground and they use that to, to their advantage. It's no more like, it's not like Scream 1, which took place in, you know, in a little town. Scream 2, which took place on a university campus. Uh, Scream 3, again, Hollywood. Scream 4, small town. Scream 5, small town. Can you believe that three of the Scream movies all took place in the same place? Like, it's a bit weird, isn't it? But Scream 6 is like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. We're going bigger and open. And it's like, yes, that's that's what I want to see. And they use that to their potential. Like, it's a big area. Anything can happen. Uh, and, of course, you get public killings as well now. So it's like, yeah, damn, that's pretty terrifying. <laughs> so, yeah, New York. They, they did it well. They did it very well. You get a lot of decent scenes here, obviously. And uh, I think some people complained there weren't a lot of chase sequences in the last movie. You get a lot of chase sequences here. So that's cool to see. Like, they, they up it. Like, if there were things that were missing from the last movie, they throw it in here. And it's like, it's cool. I, I, like, my, I like my good old-fashioned ghost face chase sequence. Um, and speaking of ghost face, brutal. Brutal. I feel like Scream 5 was definitely the most brutal one when it came to kills. But there's definitely a lot of uh, brutal killings in this one. Uh, but mainly a lot of brutal stabbings. I mean, there are moments in Scream 5 where like it's like stab, stab, stab. Here, it it goes nuts with it to the point where it's like, oh, oh. Like I've said it before, right? I've said it before. I would rather get shot than ever get stabbed. And I live in the UK, so, you know. Christ, I'm terrified all the time when I'm going to certain places. It's like, please, don't let it happen to me. Like, seeing these movies, it's like, nope, nope, shoot me, shoot me. I'd, ra I'd rather feel the bullet than, uh, than feel a freaking multiple stab wounds. No, no. It, seriously, like, it's so uncomfortable seeing that. Like, uh, seeing just characters just going through and it's like, good God, stop already. Please stop. The, the sounds, the sounds in this, like, the, the sound mixing and that, the way they did this and this, like, uh, damn good job, damn good job. It's It's brutal. And it's very unnerving. And, you know, that's the whole point. It's how it should be. And it's like, yeah, okay, good. Well done. You know, you, you got that right. And Ghostface in this is is pretty terrifying. I mean, again, like, uh, obviously different killers all the time in each film. But uh, it's just iconic at this point. And I love the fact that they get that dude. Uh, what's it? Roger Jackson, I think, doing the voice. Like, uh, I love it that he's been in six films so far. And he keeps doing the voice. And it's like, great. And, yeah, you just get very cool moments in this. And surprises and subverting expectations again scream 5 sort of did this again i get a lot of people saying oh they played it safe and that and it's like yeah they played it safe there are moments where obviously the movie is sort of uh phrasing or paraphrasing a lot of things that were happening in the previous films but there were moments generally where it was like yeah no we're gonna subvert your expectations in a good way and it does that and this movie continues that like you know it does certain things especially the opening i have to say the opening was very unexpected and very well done and it's like oh wow uh we're, we're going, we're going like this, we're going, we're going in this route, and you're wondering, no, this, this has to go in a different direction, right, like, and it does, and it's like, okay, that was, that was pretty fun, and I like that, I like that they did this, again, same with Scream 5, like the, you know, you went into that film expecting the opening to be your typical opening, and then it wasn't, and then they do the same thing here again, you go in thinking it's your typical opening, and it isn't, it keeps subverting your expectations, and then with the twists and that, and the turns towards the end of the film, like when it gets to the third act review, and it's like, ah, because th there were a few moments where I was like, wait a minute, is this what they're gonna do, and then, and then they, they sort of didn't, and then they did, so like, it kept me guessing, I like when a movie 
keeps me guessing. I like it when I can figure something out through the little hints that they give you. Even if it's not a big hint, it's enough of a hint to make you sort of question and sit there going, is this what they may be going for? Because there's a, like I said, there's a theme in this. There is a theme in this. And they they do they do it wonderfully they do it pretty well bloody well like uh and yeah overall man this movie was just it's fun i like a good horror film like i said i like i like a good horror film and this is one of them and uh yeah i gotta give a prop scream man like it i just i just feel like uh, it's in good hands at the moment obviously because it's at a point of highness right now it's at a high and you know it can only really sort of come down like which gets me worried about where they're going to go with uh, Scream 7, I guess. Because I feel I feel like they've done enough now with this movie. They've done enough, like, where, you know, you're going to have to come up with something really good. Uh, and another thing I have to say about this is, like, uh, the references, man. The, the fan references that they do in this movie. It's like, yeah, they're acknowledging. They're acknowledging theories and that. And I like that. I like that. It's like, uh, you know, the writers aren't ignoring us. They know that we're out there, that we got our theories, that we got certain things. And they're acknowledging those theories and it's like huh that's that's pretty clever but there was one thing there was one thing about scream 5 i was hoping that it would do i felt like the entire movie was building up to it hinting at it and then and then it didn't happen and i was like ah oh. and then it sort of happens again here sort of not a lot not enough to make me go yeah they're gonna do that they're not gonna do that but there was a little hint and i was like what are you doing what are you doing what are you why are you trying to like like egg me on on this it's like don't do that and i'm wondering maybe maybe they're gonna do that with the next movie maybe like i'm hoping they would because that would be pretty cool but at the same time it's something i feel like a lot of fans would expect at this point but i'm hoping they do do it it will be it will be awesome but yeah scream six did i have a good time with it yeah it was bloody great um uh, i'd say definitely go and watch it in cinemas uh, is it one of the best ones? Uh, I think I think Scream 1 and 2, like I said, the OGs will always be better. But I think Scream 1 and 2 take the cake for being the two best ones. I think Scream 5 is definitely the third best one. So I'm going to put that in the third spot. And I'm going to put Scream 6 in the fourth slot. Obviously, I'm going to have to re-watch these movies again to properly sit down and analyze them. Think, which one do I prefer more? But yeah, I think this is the fourth best one, for me at least. And then followed by Scream 3, which... I never really hated. Definitely not as good as the first two, but I never hated it. I think Scream 3 is fun in its own way. And Scream 4, in my opinion, is the worst one. Like, not that it's bad, the quality is damn good, but, uh, and, you know, for the most part, the characters, you know, what you have is decent, but there was just something off about the writing that I didn't really like. I felt like it was definitely more of a parody than it was compared to the other movies. And I feel like Scream 5 and 6 have brought it up to this level of, like, yeah, we're back, we're back at this all time high, and we can keep going, but realistically, it's definitely going to come down so i do i do expect a drop of quality definitely with the next movie if we get it i'll be very surprised if it ends up some again subverting expectations or surpassing my expectations and actually being a really be better or good film as the last two but yeah i like this franchise i like where it's gone i like how they've done it and i can't wait to see more and uh hopefully the you know when we do get to see more it'll be better it'll be good so yeah but yeah definitely give this a go i liked it i liked it uh Final score, I guess I'd give this properly uh, a 7.5 out of 10. Maybe an 8, actually, even. Maybe. It, it, it is a good film. But uh, let me take it down a notch and give this properly uh, a, a 3 out of half. 3 out of half out of 5, guys. 3 out of half out of 5, guys. 3 out of half stabs, okay? Definitely give it a go. Definitely give it a view. It's worth it, I think. And yeah, can't wait to see the rest. Hope you guys like my review. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.